Warren Buffett, also known as the Sage of Omaha, is widely considered to be the most successful investor in history. When he became the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway in 1970, it was a small provincial textile manufacturer. Since then, it's transformed into the world's largest conglomerate, making Buffett the world's third richest man with a net worth of $88.9 billion. But Warren Buffett has also set the mold for the ethical billionaire by establishing a practice of philanthropy. However, the question remains, how does Warren Buffett spend his billions? To understand how Buffett became the investing guru that he is today, we need to revisit his childhood. He was born in Omaha, Nebraska in 1930 and quickly developed a talent for math and problem solving. Buffett displayed an interest in business and investing at a young age. He was inspired by a book he borrowed from the Omaha Public Library at the age of seven, 1,000 Ways to Make $1,000. Much of Buffett's early childhood years were enlivened with entrepreneurial ventures. In one of his first business ventures, Buffett sold chewing gum, Coca-Cola bottles, and weekly magazines door-to-door. -door. Buffett's interest in the stock market and investing dated to schoolboy days he spent in the customer's lounge of original stock brokerage near his father's own brokerage office. On a trip to New York City at age 10, he made a point to visit the New York Stock Exchange. At 11, he bought three shares of City Service Preferred for himself and three for his sister Doris Buffett. It was clear he was destined for greatness. His senior yearbook picture reads, Likes math, a future stockbroker. This determined his path for years to come, but it's important to remember that he earned the vast majority of his income after he turned 50. Though Warren Buffett is notorious for his aversion to luxury items, he has at least a couple indulgences. Perhaps chief among them is his private jet. Certainly, the plane is extravagant, but Buffett insists that it's necessary for him to fulfill his duties as the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. Buffett long criticized the use of private jets by CEOs and magnates so much that when he broke down and bought his own private Bombardier Challenger jet over two decades ago, he ironically called it the Indefensible. Fast forward a few years and Buffett renamed his plane the Indispensable, given how much he came to rely on it, according to Forbes. The Bombardier Challenger 605 is a top-of-the-line private jet that generally sells for $27 million. Buffett came to love private jet travel so much that he bought a private jet leasing company called NetJets in 1998. NetJets lets users buy shares of private jets as fractional owners or lease and buy the aircraft outright. The jets can be shared like a timeshare and used upon request. Rather than having a massive portfolio of real estate investments, Warren Buffett has only one family home. He paid $31,500 for his house in 1958, or about $250,000 in today's dollars. The house sits on a corner property in central Omaha, and the original 1921 stucco structure appears to have some additions. At 6,570 square feet, it's no bungalow, but it's also a few thousand square feet short of being a mansion, which is usually about 10,000 square feet. The house is worth less than 0.001% of his total fortune, meaning that he is living far below his means. That has caused a stir in the business world where many people are taking note and learning that flashy personal purchases can set you back both financially and professionally. The house has five bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms. When asked on BBC if he would ever move to a more extravagant home, Buffett replied, I'm happy there. I'd move if I thought I'd be happier someplace else. Back in 1971, Buffett decided to splurge on a vacation home for himself and his family in Laguna Beach, California. He bought it for $150,000 at the time. Warren Buffett's 3,588 square foot Oceanside family vacation home in Laguna Beach was first listed for $11 million, according to listing agent Bill Dolby of Villa Real Estate. Built in 1936, the six bedroom, seven bathroom property is designed to maximize as many ocean views as possible. A tiered design allows for tall windows and full-length glass doors to adorn the ocean-facing side of the house, with the upper levels having at least a partial ocean view from each of the main rooms. It's an unusual layout, but it works really well, Warren Buffett's daughter, Susan Buffett, said in a phone interview. It's got these separate spaces that are interesting because people can do their own thing. Not just when we would be out there, but friends of mine who stayed at the house have liked it because their kids can go over in the family room at night and be over there by themselves and watch TV and play games. After his wife passed away, Buffett sold it for $6 million. 
As with his homes, Warren Buffett is uninterested in anything flashy or ostentatious. In 2014, he reportedly bought a Cadillac XTS, a car with a retail price of around $45,000. It was an upgrade from his previous car, a 2006 Cadillac DTS, which he decided to get rid of when his daughter Susie told him it was embarrassing. The business mogul justified the delay, as you might expect, pragmatically, telling Forbes, I only drive about 3,500 miles a year, so I will buy a new car very infrequently. Buffett is still driving his car even though it's more than 10 years old. Many wealthy people use cars as status symbols, but he is clearly not one of those people. And he is not the only billionaire to do so. Mark Zuckerberg, Alice Walton, Steve Ballmer and Bill Gates all drive unremarkable cars because they are focused on things other than material possessions. Not only is Warren Buffett obscenely rich, he also has a strong moral compass. He recognizes that renewable energy is the way of the future, which is why he made a huge investment in clean energy, both to benefit his business and the environment. Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway Energy subsidiary has gobbled up utilities and natural gas pipelines and tapped into clean energy production, including from Southern California's abundant geothermal resources in an effort to create a recession-proof portfolio. As of this year, Buffett said that Berkshire Hathaway has committed $15 billion to renewable energy already. More importantly, Buffett said that he is ready to invest another $15 billion in the sector. Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, Jack Ma, and other tech titans recently committed $1 billion to launching a new, low-carbon energy fund. Warren Buffett's company is busy investing in new solar and wind energy projects, including the world's largest solar plant and 84 major corporations have pledged to source 100% of their energy from renewables going forward. Many of the world's wealthiest people are racing to invest in renewables. Though they can be dependent on government subsidies, it's clear that the world is shifting towards new energy innovation and away from traditional sources of fuel. Buffett has invested in companies that didn't turn a profit for many years. This is all part of his philosophy of patience pays. Even if people think he's crazy, if he believes in a company, he will invest and wait for the money to roll in over the long term. Buffett has described his strategy as the Rip Van Winkle approach after the main character of a famous short story by American author Washington Irving, who falls asleep and wakes up 20 years later. Perfect timing is difficult, if not impossible to achieve, but Buffett explains that we simply attempt to be fearful when others are greedy, and to be greedy only when others are fearful. We've mentioned that Berkshire Hathaway is an enormous conglomerate, but exactly what companies does it own? As of March 12, 2019, Berkshire Hathaway had a market capitalization of about $500 billion, making it one of the largest publicly traded companies worldwide. Since its inception in 1965, Berkshire Hathaway has grown by more than 2 million percent. To put that in perspective, the S&P 500 has only grown 15,000 percent in the same period. Insurance subsidiaries tend to represent the largest pieces of Berkshire Hathaway, but the company also manages hundreds of diverse businesses all over the world, including Dairy Queen, Burlington Northern Santa Fe, Pampered Chef, Fruit of the Loom, NetJets, and Geico, among others. In addition to owning private companies, Berkshire also has a large investment portfolio of stocks in major public companies, such as Apple, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo. Berkshire's public market equity portfolio is valued at $183 billion. In the early part of his career at Berkshire, Buffett focused on long-term investments in publicly traded companies, but more recently he has bought whole companies. Berkshire now owns a diverse range of businesses, including confectionery, retail, railroads, home furnishings, encyclopedias, manufacturers of vacuum cleaners, jewelry, newspaper publishing, manufacture and distribution of uniforms, and several regional electric and gas utilities, just to name a few. Most investors use Berkshire Hathaway as a beacon and an indicator of what will be valuable valuable in the coming years. Warren Buffett's greatest quality is his penchant for philanthropy. He is tied with Bill Gates as the world's most generous philanthropist of the 21st century. In 2017, the Chronicle of Philanthropy calculated the giving since 2000 of the 10 richest people in America. Buffett topped the list, giving away more than $46 billion since 2000. That worked out to be 71% of his $65.5 billion fortune. Since then, he has gained more than $20 billion, but that amount would be much higher if he wasn't giving away so much of his money. And bear in mind that this doesn't include any giving before the year 2000 or any anonymous donations. 
He and Bill Gates were the progenitors of the Giving Pledge, which is a commitment to give away all of their wealth over the course of their lifetime. He has convinced many of the world's richest individuals to donate more than 50% of their wealth over the course of their lifetime. In his own words, in 2006, I made a commitment to gradually give all of my Berkshire Hathaway stock to philanthropic foundations. I couldn't be happier with that decision. The most significant charitable donation Warren Buffett has ever made is his $37 billion pledge to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. This donation, originally pledged in 2006, will take effect upon his death, as he has directed in his will. Individual contributions from Buffett represent some of the largest single charity contributions in history. Buffett believes the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation effectively addresses the problems of global inequity in access to healthcare and education, including significant contributions to help these resources reach the world's poorest women and children. Much of what the foundation does is directed towards these issues. The foundation provides grants to other organizations and does direct research work to develop solutions in addition to its financial contributions. To Buffett, this organization is a wise investment of his estate. In the long run, this may be his lasting legacy, though he will undoubtedly be remembered for his preternatural gift for stock picking and overall business acumen, it's his overwhelming generosity that distinguishes him from other wealthy people. Thankfully, his billionaire cohorts, with a few notable exceptions, have taken his cue and are beginning to use their massive assets for the power of good.